Get ready. Death to all but metal. That will pretty much have to be your creed if you wish to conquer the lands of Valfaris, drenching your home planet in a carpet of blood on your way to uncovering what happened to your homeworld and its people, all with a ripping heavy metal soundtrack to drive you forward with the carnage. The first thing that will grab your attention about Valfaris is its stunning pixel presentation. From the moment your ship slams into the surface, you are mesmerized by the thousands of moving pixels. Sparking computers, pulsating plant life, explosions of blood. Every screenshot of the game is brimming with detail. It would have taken a lot of 32X and Sega CD add-ons for the Mega Drive to get to this graphical fidelity, but it's really cool to see what action platformers back from the 16-bit era could look like in the hands of a talented team that clearly love this style of game. Valfaris is a highly skillful action platformer, with all the quality of life enhancements in games these days, which means no limited lives, no game overs, and frustrating continue screens, causing you to replay large chunks of levels again, or in some cases the entire game. Instead, Valfaris is hard in all the right ways, like Super Meat Boy where failing takes seconds to get you back into the action to try again. But unlike Super Meat Boy, Val Faris equips you with a treasure trove of weaponry and character abilities, giving you a great selection of playstyles and ways to play. Each combat scenario has you deciding on a wealth of actions and not utilising the many moves of the main character can leave you hitting a brick wall as far as progress is concerned. As enemies get harder to defeat, having fewer ways to get past their attack patterns and defense, if you are not versed in all the weapons and abilities you have, you will have a hard time in battle. So it's a good job that the game is a lot of fun to master when it comes to its battle system. The game has an easy to play, hard to master style, which gives you a lot to think about, but makes the gameplay so badass when you get it right. You have a primary fire, which tend to be a collection of pistols with infinite ammo but low power. Secondary fire, which includes the more heavy hitting weapons such as machine guns, shotguns, rocket launchers, that kind of thing. But the use of the secondary weapon is limited by the ammo bar. Therefore your melee weapon, be it swords, axes or body parts of destroyed bosses, give you ammo for your secondary weapon when you kill with it. So this gives the game a simple but challenging triangle system, causing you to mix up your attack style for the best results. So where other platform shooting games may have you running to find the best place just to stand and shoot, Valfaris ramps up the pace by always giving you a way of attacking enemies on the move, during platforming sections, and everything in between. But it's not all about frantic gunfire and beam swords. You can block attacks with your shield, which will deplete your ammo gauge when struck by hostile attacks. But time the block on impact and you can parry melee strikes stunning enemies and even grabbing projectiles to shoot back at your foes. 
It all adds to the controlling of this chaos on screen as you attempt to obliterate all in your path, especially the screen filling bosses. Which are most definitely a highlight. The art of the boss battle, in my opinion, is often lost to modern day game development, with them often being little more than storytelling devices or damage sponges. Valfaris does boss battles the right way, giving you a different challenge each time, testing your understanding of new weapons, examining your ability to learn attack patterns, and counter with the weapons loadout you have chosen, with the last boss particularly testing your gameplay skills. Valfaris doesn't punish you for choosing a particular loadout. Every time you fail, you have the opportunity to rethink your strategy, change your chosen weapons and try again. Yet every boss and section in the game is beatable with any weapon combination, providing you are skilled enough. Making it a perfect balance of problem solving and customization. It is very rewarding, and it doesn't hurt that your enemies die in gruesome ways as you wade through their corpses. As you play, you can upgrade your weapons, making them stronger. You do this by collecting items in the very well designed and detailed levels. The layout of the levels are linear in design, and although they give off a Metroid-like vibe, you are unable to backtrack to find what you have missed. This is very much a straight up level by level affair, so be sure to explore and pick up what you find as you go, because you could have a much more difficult experience later on if you don't. Video games tend to paint ruined worlds and post-apocalyptic areas in many browns and greys, but Valfaris instead paints its world in colour. Bleak and death never look this good, with each level transitioning beautifully into one another. Every location is very different from the last and having their own personality and feel. Telling the story of the enemies ahead, with enemies that make perfect sense in the settings they are placed. And everything is living and breathing. Just because it is a pixel art style doesn't mean the quality is lost in its looks. Flies buzz around decaying landscapes. Blood flows like rivers in the torch-lit temples. Plants and animals sway and fly about. The technology sparking and wires surging in the destroyed cities. The backgrounds are gorgeous and always have something going on. Which is a very good thing, because I died a lot in Valfaris. But I never felt a death was unfair. It was always my fault, and I knew what I had done wrong. So when I tried again, I had a clear understanding that I had to try something else. It also has some neat ideas in your choice of how to progress. Save points need these green artifacts. There are plenty throughout the game, but you can instead decide to hang on to these artifacts and skip a checkpoint in exchange for more life. You see, the more of these artifacts you have, the larger your health bar becomes. The more you choose to risk progressing onwards without a checkpoint, the more damage you can take. It's an interesting dilemma, where at first you think, why would I not save? But by the end, you are torn because more health could be what you need to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bigger bosses, and redoing a platforming section may not actually be that bad after all. But Valfaris isn't all good. Unfortunately, as metal as its setting is, the story is a bit flat. With many of the characters not having anything interesting to say. Text boxes appear at segments to explain your mission for the next section, and banter with bosses does explain why you are fighting, but they are neither interesting or memorable. And I even found these dialogue exchanges made the main character less badass at times. It could have done with some decent one-liners, instead it's like the creative writers of WWE decided to write all the main characters' promos. But all of that won't bother you too much, when you're smashing tiny soldiers in a giant heavy metal mech, or slamming spaceships through waves of monsters in a rain of blood. Once all the killing is done and the game is beat, you do have a hard mode that is unlocked. So you are able to play the game fresh with all the upgrades you found, with all the enemies being more powerful per hit. Which is fine for some, but I did wish there was more to unlock, and the cliffhanger ending will leave many annoyed as the story really didn't have enough going on for it for one game, let alone a series. Still, I guess this can be addressed if they ever make Valfaris 2. Valfaris is a bloody good time, literally. Gunning your way through armies of monsters and soldiers, few games feel this great to play when you get good. I haven't had this much fun with an action platformer in a long time. You can instantly see your improvements as you quickly jump back into the action after a failure or death, 
Controls are tight, responsive and a lot of fun, the world is stunning to look at and the climactic boss battles are a blast. If you like the kind of game where you want to test your reflexes and platforming skills, you cannot go wrong with Valtharis. Less skilled players will die and be buried by the challenge, where higher skilled players will create their own fighting style and stand tall on the pile of corpses left behind, banging their head as the gods of metal shred their guitars. Morgan Emily Jane says, What the neon midlife crisis is this? Is this Arnie's 2021 calendar cover? It's a miss from me. The art style and music is stunning. However, the game is really let down by a sloppy plotline, empty dialogue, and metal stereotypes. Delightful to watch being played, but if I was going to dabble in this genre for the first time, I would start with Super Metroid personally. Kizra says, It's got a cool look to it. The music is really rocking. Graphics and audio are stunning, gameplay doesn't look like something I'd have the patience for, but fun and satisfying for people who do enjoy this type of game. It's not for me, but I'm calling it a hit because it looks like it does its things well. Slasher says, the soundtrack here is excellent, the presentation and atmosphere is superb, it's a hit for me. Vagra says, why didn't I pick this up sooner? This is already reminding me of Turrican, Whoever the artist is did an amazing job with attention to detail. Mistress Puff says, I really like this game. It appeals to my teenage metal head. I think it's loads of fun. I love the world, the enemies and the music. I do love the difficult side scroll style. True Nemesis Prime says, definitely the best game you've had on Critical Hit for me. That boss fight just made it a hit. So, adding up all the hits and the misses from the One Life Left community, we collectively give Val Faris 78%. If you want to be a part of the next critical hit and have your say about the games that we review, join the One Life Left community on Discord, YouTube, Twitch and or Facebook and leave your comments on any of our game review posts. Thank you to everyone who gave their opinion on this week's game. This was Bill on behalf of One Life Left, and we'll see you next time on Critical Hit.